right, welcome. So today we're going to talk about uh, making your own uh, adjustable push rod here, which is rather taboo, and, and I'll discuss why that is so and why I actually advocate against doing this unless you absolutely have to. And I'll kind of tell the story of, you know, what situation I got in where I had to make this guy. It's, it's kind of entertaining to a degree. Um, but anyway, I'm sure you all know why you're here, but the, the point of um, needing an adjustable push rod is so that you can determine your proper push rod length for um, having correct valve train geometry. And I do have a pretty good video out there on how to um, properly determine your required push rod length for your valve train uh, geometry to be correct. So um, I won't get into that too much today, but that is a pretty good video. It's been out there for a while and um, it goes through it pretty in depth and explains it step by step. So, a little disclaimer here before we begin. Um, again, unless you get into a really tight spot and you absolutely have to make this, and uh, I'll give you the rundown on, on how, why I had to make mine here, but unless you absolutely have to, just buy the adjustable push rod for your required length um, from Comp Cams. They're super cheap anymore. They've even went down in price. They used to be about $25, $30, and I think now they're down in, in the teens. And... Um, they're a really handy unit for, you know, obvious reasons. I mean, just do a comparison. They're nice and straight um, for every turn. They're 50 thousandths of an inch. Um, they're, they're really pretty nice and pretty effective tools. But um, kind of how, let's see if we can get organized here. But anyway, kind of how I came to have mine here, and, and this one's for a 351 uh, Windsor. So uh, I have a friend of mine, Lee. I was going out to help him do his push rod length. And I had forgotten that I had actually loaned out my adjustable push rod for the 351. They, the adjustable push rods come in different lengths, and um, what I had with me was the 302 push rod, and the 351 having a slightly taller deck, you know, it, it required a different push rod length checker, which I loaned out and didn't have. Well, you know, he happens to live three hours away, and I was already halfway there, and it's like, well, you know, and we've been trying to get together to do this for a while, and and um, it was hard to find the time to get all the way out there and finally I had some so we had to get a little creative so um, there are some challenges with doing this and just some issues um, you know with with making your own where the normal one or the one that you can buy rather is just a lot better um, the biggest one that really bothers me is you never know exactly. Um, you can take your measurement end to end, but um, push rod length manufacturers, you know, they don't. You don't exactly know which piece they're measuring from. Now, this is usually okay because you're, you know, if, if you're making your own, probably you're not buying the custom length, exact fit uh, push rods. You're, you're probably going through Trick Flow and getting those um, hundred dollar hardened. Um, push rods that they, they go up incrementally every 50 thousandths and those are pretty nice pieces and, and that's typically what I use and I have in my engine here and you know they work good for a street car and I don't see any problem with using them so um, you know that difference is really inconsequential but it's not exactly perfect and that's what I don't like so I guess we'll go through the rest of it as we jump in here and I kind of explain how to make it um, obviously you can see it's, it's not too much two nuts some all thread Obviously, I threaded both ends of the push rod, but um, there are some challenges here, and this is kind of how I went about um, doing this guy. So, get some of this out of the way here. The first thing, obviously, you do is you have to take, we took a standard length push rod and went ahead and, and just took a hacksaw to it and cut it. And then what you're going to want to do is shorten it down a little bit because you need to get these two nuts on here. If you don't shorten it, <laughs> obviously, it's going to be way too long for what you're trying to do. So you want to go ahead and cut out um, a pretty good chunk out of there. And then um, from this point you're going to want to chuck each of these um, each of these pieces of a push rod up in a vise and we had to get a pair of vise grips on it to hold on to it which accounts for all the distortion here and then um, you know 
I wanted to use a quarter 20 uh, tap on this and a qu quarter 20 all thread and I'll explain why in a second. Um, you machinist folk, you probably already know why. But um, anyway, I wanted to go ahead and step my drill bit slowly up to that number seven drill bit that you need for that quarter 20. Uh, the biggest thing is it's very difficult to get everything straight, which I'll explain why that's not completely imperative, but you know, it, it's nice to have it as straight as you possibly can. So it's very easy to get off unless you're doing this in a drill press, which again, if you're gonna take that much time, just buy the actual piece. So anyway, in a pinch, um, we just went ahead and stepped it up until we got to that number seven drill bit and then ran the tap down as straight as we possibly could. And that's all pretty straightforward. Um, you're tapping quite a bit of threads in here, which is a lot different than how you normally use a tap. So you're gonna wanna go a little bit and then pull it back out. Um, clean all the crap off your tap and then just keep um, going along until you get quite a few threads in there and you're gonna really want to use tap oil because even though this doesn't seem hard you know it just seems harder than the normal stuff that you're running a tap through so um, you just want to be careful there and not snap your tap off of course but I use a quarter 20 and again I'll get to that in a moment um, the other piece here when you do make your cut you're gonna want to bias your cut to one side so that when you do have your push rod in the engine you can make your adjustments. Obviously you made your cut right in the middle, which is what you're gonna wanna do, cause I almost did it. You know, then your adjustment would be right where your cylinder head is. So that doesn't work out too well either. So once you get these um, pieces tapped um, and everything to the right length, the biggest thing, well, the length is a huge piece also. Now, uh, a little bit of the machinist stuff here. The reason I wanted to use a quarter 20 tap is that 20 at the end of um, our designate our thread designation there that means there's 20 TPI 20 threads per inch so um, each turn if you take one and divide by 20 is 50,000 so one turn of your push rod is 50 thousandths of an inch now for that to be actually effective and you be able to use that correctly what you're going to want to do is take these pieces and continually measure them out and grind them down until when everything is totally um, together and not adjusted out at all, it's exactly um, eight or whatever. This one is exactly eight inches, but you want a nice exact measurement that you can work with. You know, if you're sitting at like 8.235 or something, that's not really that handy. So um, this one is exactly eight inches. And every turn that I go out, it's 50 thousandths of an inch. Remember that part I said about um, trick flow and their push rods coming in 50 thousandths increments. Well, now you can kind of see why I went with that quarter 20 and why we're doing this in this manner. So um, the final piece to making this uh, the proper length here, or, or properly making it, I mean, is that you want to, when it's fully assembled and you have your, your length on this guy, um, you want to make a mark so that you know when you have made a full revolution. If you don't do this or if you use different spots, you know, you're never going to get this drilled exactly straight. And if you're not working off of the same point, you know, that's, that's going to mess with your measurement. So if you know that at this point right here with this facing up, this is 8 inches, then you know that this now will be 8.050. You know, real easy. So um, anyway, that's if you have to absolutely make one of these adjustable push rods, that's how I would uh, go ahead and do it. And that's pretty much it for the video today. Um, how to make your your very own adjustable <laughs> push rod length checker for determining your push rod length. There you go.